And we just brought you uh, that great report by Daniel Dadze about the surgery of that young man who got his hand severed um, at a sawmill where he was working. And we had uh, great work done by those uh, medical doctors and the surgeons there. That was good work too. But more doctors, more health facilities across the country are doing great work. And already we know the second focus fundraising event to support surgeries of some 100 underprivileged children is coming off Saturday, that will be next week, the 19th of May, at the Mervyn Peak Ambassador Hotel. Well, the Make a Move Save a Child project is to help children suffering from various degrees of sclerosis to receive optimal medical care and stand tall like all of us. Well, this is possible through your kind donations, you and I, and sponsorships from not only corporate bodies but everybody else. The Foundation for Orthopedics and Complex Spine Hospital Focus is giving you the opportunity to save a child at its second fundraising ceremony that will be taking place uh, here in Accra. That will be next week. And so I have um, some great experts as well as workers from that hospital here with us. They will be part of the whole initiative to make sure that uh, we raise enough funding and help the hospital do its great work. Uh, Vivian Kwashi Kumasa is the administrative manager for the Focus Hospital. Uh, she's here. Vivian, good morning to you. Good morning. Great. And Dr. Joseph Ojedu is an orthopedic surgeon with the hospital as well. Good morning to you. Good morning. Doc, how are you? I'm fine. Yourself. Yeah. I saw a surgery that was frightening. <laughs> <laughs> it always. <laughs> but it comes naturally to you, doesn't it? With time, yes. With time, you get used uh, to. Yeah, can be tricky to start with here, but right. Um, but let me let me s let me start off with with you and as administrative manager. Um, you, you, this is the second time you're doing this. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we had a maiden um, event last year, also in May. It was very successful, and um, you know people always say that um, you know, philanthropy is quite new in Ghana. However, we found out that you know people actually know about it, and you know are willing to help. So why not give them that you know opportunity? So we decided, okay, you know, let's have another one. So the whole so intention is to make sure you raise enough to offset whatever cause uh, there are or will be when you undertake free surgeries. Yes, yes. So. Um, um, the surgeries that we do in Focus are really, in the U.S., cost so much. But in, in, down here in Ghana, you know, we have you know, brought it to just very low, just you know, a very small portion you know, of it is what you, know, you would have to pay. But in Ghana, when you even mention that amount, people still go like, wow. So um, it's hard, you know. You have people who show that, you know, the orange seller, you know, who has a daughter, has scoliosis, $10,000. Who seem like the whole world to that person, you know, and sometimes they are unable, you know, to raise such funds. So we really, really, you know, crave the um, indulgence of the public and anybody who, you know, has some resource to help, because there are really so many children with the condition, you know, out there, you know, and and they need help. Yeah. Well, we'll come back out to, to the initiative yeah. itself, Dr. J. Yes, but sclerosis, what is it? <laughs> All right, so scoliosis basically refers to a curvature of the spine, but this curvature is in the side-to-side -side direction. Okay, so if you have somebody standing straight, you have a curve that goes that way. That is a scoliosis. It's different from having a kyphosis, where the curve is to so the, the back. It's different from kyphosis. A, a kyphosis. Kyphosis. Yeah, so kyphosis refers to a curvature in this particular plane. So the person has what you would call a hunchback, okay, or you lo lose the hunch, the, the normal curvature of the spine. But scoliosis refers to a curvature on the side. But with most people, it's actually a combination. It is very unusual to have a pure curve in one particular plane, but then you find that it's a combination of curves. Yeah. Well, so the idea that there are many children that suffer this, uh, what yeah. will be the cause of this? So uh, quite a... <laughs> On the, on the average, about 2% about of any population would suffer this type of condition. So in Ghana, with a population probably looking at about uh, 20 to 30 million, you're probably looking at about 60,000 people with this type of thing. The exact cause in quite a number of people, we don't know, okay? We haven't been able to find out all the causes, but there are people who are born with conditions. You should understand that your, the, the, your backbone develops 
from tissues. And these tend to occur as a result of some difficulty with the, with the formation, either because you do not divide them very well, or you divide it partly, or a part doesn't form at all. So depending upon a combination of what happens, you end up with a deformity. I try to make it simple and say, look at, you are trying to build two columns with blocks. Okay, so you have, you have a column of 10 blocks, you pile them up. If the block, one column has eight blocks instead of 10, then you find that that side is short. Mm -hmm. But because it's tied at the, at the top and the bottom, the only way that you can get the two together is for it to curve. And that's the type of thing. So if you do not form those two columns, you'll be short on that side. The other side will be long, and so you have a curve that way. Mm -hmm. Or you may actually have the 10 blocks, but the 10 blocks, you have no mortar in between the blocks, so it doesn't divide, and that will give you a shortening on that side. Or you may have one column which is growing faster than the other side, and so that side will become longer, and the side will become shorter. Mm -hmm. Depending upon where these deformities are, it would either give you a curve to the side or a curve to the front or the back. So it's not witchcraft? Unfortunately, yeah. no. It is <laughs> it's not witchcraft. It's the stigma <laughs> that we tend yeah. to attack. Yeah. To it. But yeah. it means that it will cost a lot to try to straighten these, right? Or try to work on them. Usually, how much would it cost to work on a normal case? I mean, yeah, if an oh. ordinary person will have to pay for them. Well, in the US, you pay like over a hundred thousand, but at full cost, it will cost you just between ten to fifteen thousand or less. Yeah. yeah. What, why is yeah. that? Well, um, you know, the kind of things that I use for the surgery, you know, the, the implants, you know, you know, they are made of you know, titanium, and quite expensive, that. and also quality care is expensive. You know, um, you will be in the ICU for a while, you, would, you know, sometimes even when the patients even come to the hospital, they are malnourished. You have to fatten them up. You keep them for some time, feed them well, make sure that you know, all their levels are correct before you even take them into surgery. When you put all that together, you know, that's how come we have such... You, know, you wanted to add something? Yes, I, I just, just to add on to what mm -hmm. she's saying, the bottom line is that medical care is expensive and orthopedic care is expensive. Okay, of all the lot. Medical care is expensive. <laughs> and orthopedic, o orthopedic care, care is, is more even expensive. worse, mm -hmm. generally. But the bottom line is that some of these conditions, you see, we always see it as the, just a doctor treating a patient or a surgeon treating a patient. For that to happen, you need a number of people to support you. Who would be in the background? And you can't actually uh, quantify how much you spend on them. So yes, for me, if I take a knife and cut you, it is painful. Okay, you wouldn't lie down for me to do that. So you need another doctor who would get rid of your pain, which is the anesthetist. You will need a nurse. You will need a scrub tech. Okay, so you need to input how much it costs to get all these people on the job. Mm -hmm. You need to find out how much it costs in the material. Okay, it is not just the screw mm -hmm. and the rod, okay, so, yeah, but the so. other aspects of the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. they are, it is a high risk procedure, mm -hmm. so you need equipment that would be able to tell you even while the patient is asleep mm -hmm. that this person is safe and what you are doing is not going to cause trouble yeah. or even if it did cause trouble you should be able to detect it early all that comes in with money she mentioned a bit about some of these children who come in with different conditions i mean if you have a child who has a scoliosis invariably if you go to your village you'll find one or two of them and they would be at the periphery nobody wants to even see them that child will be malnourished the child may come in with some other problems which has to be addressed. Some of these conditions, they are congenital, they are born with it. And if you have one, you are likely to have another one. So you, you have to take care of that because it complicates your outcome. Okay. So all of these add up to make your cost expensive. The bottom line, the figures that she mentioned, they are, they are average figures. Somebody, somebody's surgery may be less, somebody's surgery may be more. Okay. And uh, you, 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 depending upon what you do, but okay, you don't. So we want could have more than fifteen thousand. Oh yes. As a cost. Oh yes. I mean, if you have to take out a whole vertebral body or three of them, and it's a different story from putting in a right. rod. Which is easier to treat when um, the patient comes in younger, earlier as a child, or is detected early? It definitely, it is. It is much easier and less expensive to treat them when they are early okay because the what you do then is, is what we would call a guided growth you guide them to go normally so you find that the person is tending to bend to one side 
you actually slow down the other side and promote the side which is not growing very well that makes it very easy if you wait until you are picking them as an adult when they are skeletally mature their lungs have been developed their heart is already failing then it's you're, you're in trouble you have it's so the part the ultimate objective of what we are doing here is to be able to detect them early we already have started some form of screening measures we sometimes go to schools to try and pick up some of these conditions but yes we want to do more of that so that we can because i just early. wanted to ask yeah. how do you identify the children or the parents or the children the communities in which they are located because we have you go to some communities uh, even more deprived mm -hmm. communities and you get to find that uh, people like that there yeah. um, and just on hindsight <laughs> apparently yeah. they have scler sclerosis so yes, yeah. it's uh, it, it's something that has to be detected mm -hmm. somebody has to bring it to your attention exactly yes yes exactly yes. you know um, we have a lot of um, um, NGOs that you know, when they go out and they do outreach, you know, those who know about us, when they meet some of these children, they bring them. We have compassion, you know, some churches when they go out, you know, they do a lot of these outreaches in the various, you know, communities up north, you know, in the hinterlands. And then, um, and then we also, you know, during the scoliosis awareness month in June, we usually go out to some of the schools and screen them. We have a screening program, so when we screen, we, we can pick up you know, those that probably have such, you know, a tendency and then we start, you know, the, giving them some, you know, treatment plan, you know, so that, you know, it does not develop into a severe, to a severe case. Yes, so, some, and then some people just walk in, you know, somebody might, might watch us on TV, oh, these people can, you know, help me with my condition, then they come in, you know. Yeah. Was this one of the, there was this report that we did from, is it Kokwe or who, or yeah. so one of our yeah. Yeah. reporters did, I forgot his name. I think he's in senior high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he, he went to one of those places too. I think there's one also, one of the specialist hospitals in Kufodia that does mm -hmm. this. I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. Now, when they are old, how difficult is it? Very difficult. Very, very difficult. I, I clearly remember a lady who came to see us from Nigeria. <coughs> this lady actually, she's authored two books. Okay. She basically is a. Uh, She's completely crippled. She can't even feed herself. She, the, even to lie on her back is impossible. She is always lying prone because she virtually chokes and she cannot survive. She, she is one of the challenging ones I've ever seen, nothing like that. So if you're picking them up when they are late, uh, it becomes very difficult for both the patient and the medical. I see. Provider. Yeah. Over time, you become non-emotive. You deal with it as a case. <laughs> well, you try to help everybody, you try to do what is possible, okay, but there are limits to what you can do. We are only human. So there are people that if you pick them up very, very late and you already are in heart failure, we're probably going to say, hey, we can't really help yeah, because there is miracles. too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. like miracles. But now let's talk about the fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, fundraising could be done virtually too. So um, if people are not there, how do they get to contribute in a way? Because I, I'm thinking maybe we can be doing more 50 pesos instead of having more 100,000. Actually, that's what we are looking for, the 50 pesos. Yeah. <laughs> so how are we doing Well, that? No, we want everybody to contribute. Um, there, there are many ways you, 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 you can contribute. Um, we have um, you know, our um, uh, banking details that you know, I'm sure they will show. Yeah, but yeah. we don't want to go you to know, the bank. We, well, we have, we'll, it's we too have tedious these days. <laughs> Mobile money is easier. You know, that kind of thing. Yes, you know, we also have you know, um, 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 a mobile money, you know, uh, number account. that, yes, yes, account okay. that, you know, we can show. Okay, so you um, have a mobile money account. Have you given it yes. to our people? Not yet. Um, not yet, I'm sure. Okay. You know, we'll have, All right. Yeah, so we'll have you have a mobile money account. Yes. And then you you have bank details, so if somebody yes. wants to contribute yes, to a bank. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, any yes, other yeah. means by which we, you raise mm -hmm. funds, apart from the sitting? Well, the, so at, at, as part of our gala, we'll be auctioning items. These are virtually things that people have donated somebody hasn't got money to give you and would prefer to give you let's say a shirt so we can auction it and people can decide this shirt is probably worth a hundred CDs but I'll pay a thousand CDs for it it's just to help the effort but the, the idea of I mean what we're doing is that nothing is too little even if you have 10 CDs yeah it's we're welcome because it's a, it's a collective effort that mm -hmm. is going to make a difference yeah. I see so the event itself is next week. Yeah. And that's the Mervyn Peak Ambassador Hotel. Exactly. 
How many people do you invite or everybody's invited? Well, we would, we would love to have as many people as can attend. Uh, the capacity of the hall is up to about 200, but well, we... So you've sent invitations out? We've sent out invitations. We are still sending some out and we're selling tickets. Uh, we do, we're doing everything to try and get as many people is in there okay. as possible. Yes. So the 19th of May, the Melvin Peak Ambassador Hotel, the time will be when? Um, from um, 7 p.m. Cocktail is 6 you know, so oh, we'll drink pre event, we'll have some nice pre event, and then, um, you know, 7 p.m. Why do we do that? We're raising funds, we're enjoying and the process. Oh, oh it's yeah. part of the. No, it's all so you no, invite it's the big people, you have to familiarize. No, but, um, you, know, you know, you must, you know, you must always mix it, you know. Yeah, there's yeah. certain balance. Yeah. <laughs> certain balance to it. <laughs> well, if we have um, all the details, we'll put it uh, online yeah. or on the screen mm -hmm. so that people can know the mm -hmm. mobile money, this is how they have to contribute. Yeah. And then also maybe the bank details as well. Yeah, yeah. But we know that you're doing good work. How long have you been in establishment? Focus has been in establishment since 1986. In our new hospital, we've been there for the past six years. Yes. Yeah, we've been there for the past six years. I personally have been with Focus for the past four and a half years. Yeah. I see. All right. We wish you all the best, mm. all of you. Thank Thanks so you. much. Thank you. Good work. Thanks you so are the miracle mm -hmm. workers of our country. <laughs> and uh, we've had in the studio Thanks, Dr. Joseph Ojeidu. Uh, he is an orthopedic surgeon yeah. with Focus Hospital. They're, mm -hmm. they're putting together a fundraising event. It will be on the 19th of May. That's next week, Saturday, at the Mervin uh, Peak Ambassador Hotel. Uh, it is from 6, 7 p.m. Please make sure that you go there. Okwa Kriska, you know. <laughs> have, have your checkbook. You wanna go, go light but give heavy, <laughs> yeah. And then also Vivian Kwashi Kumasa, who is the uh, administrative um, manager. Is that it? Yeah, okay. Big post, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's not big post, it's a humble post, it's a humble <laughs> post. It's a humble. Which end do you attend? Um, Action Chapel, oh, ah, that's right. Anyway, we wish you all the best. It's what you